Welcome to Infinity Capital, everyone. Today we are going to discuss about Indaprastha Indra Gas Limited, IGL, right? Company was formed in 1998. This was a collaboration between Gale Gas Authority of India Limited and Bharat Petroleum Corporation Limited, right? Company is into the business of uh, gas distribution. So they supply gas to Delhi and Sia region, and some they have uh, they have been awarded some more uh, areas also like Meerut, Kanpur, Muzaffar, Gram, Karnal, and all. So pretty widespread. Company's uh, market capital capital is around thirty nine thousand crores. You know, so it's a mid cap company, slowly moving on to becoming a large cap company, right? So. they are into the business of providing cng png as well so they are catering to more than 1.1 million cng vehicles 1.4 million domestic png customers they have around 5500 commercial industrial customers right so they have uh, they have set up the their 550th cng station right so a pretty good setup you know so they provide natural gas in the form of uh, png compressed natural gas natural gas for commercial and industrial usage right so this is what the business is all about on the side they've backed in bulk order from the armed forces right so overall you know overall they have a pretty robust business and they have a monopoly of sorts in the delhi and cia region let's go through the credit rating and find out more so they have around roughly around you know 600 crores of long term facilities 400 crores of long term bonds the ratings are pretty robust right and uh, so their their liquidity position is also pretty st strong they have roughly around 3300 crores of uh, uh, cash on the books so 2300 crores in terms of investments and 1132 crores in terms of cash equivalent so this is free cash available for them they can use this right around roughly around 3500 crores of uh, internal accrued cash available to them if they want to expand do some sort of expansion right so in the rating what can we find out so basically this was formed between between a jv bpcl and gale right and they hold around 22.5% equity each okay so this is what the shareholding structure looks like and uh, they have a monopolistic sort of a business setup right they have a first first mover advantage so and they plus have some exclusivity right for the first 5 years and then you know uh, so so on and so forth but uh, you know without having exclusivity rights also guys it's a very capital intensive business you need some sort of parentage to do this business you can't have just some company coming up and say okay i'm going to start distribution distributing gas so the fact that they have a parentage like bpcl and gale they are able to do this you know they have a good setup and uh, you know they have they have support from the government as well other than that it becomes very difficult to to do this business one is capital intensive to its regulatory there are a lot of regulatory uh, hurdles in setting up a business like this so it's a risky business for a private entity to enter into right i mean if you could do a jv with the government it could be a different thing right so now what what else can we find out uh, from this credit rating so basically you know we are going to figure out just one more thing so they are doing some they are doing a capex wherein uh, you know just a moment guys i'll i'll show it to you uh, one moment just a moment guys uh this was over here i believe so expansion yes so a capacity outlay of 1370 crores has been uh, you know they have uh, they are looking to expand 21 and 22 they are looking to do expansion in 22 also 
right so this will be done through internal accruals you know so they have gotten some uh, new uh, you know sort of geographical areas to work upon wherein they will be working on those new areas so those are your uh, st uh, cities like meerut and you know so the uh, north up uh, you know places so oh, here guys so if you can see over here so ghaziabad revari muzaffarnagar karnal you know these are the places where they will be working on you know to provide gas services in the future let's look at the shareholding pattern so promoters hold around 45% fii's have around 24% dii is around 15% or so right it's pretty pretty solid government has 5% pretty solid you know institutional support in this stock cash flows from uh, operations have been very robust their cash flows have you know increased you know many fold since uh, 2015 16 it's gone up from 650 crores to 1500 crores it's pretty robust balance sheet is also pretty robust you know there's this this num this borrowing number is very minimal it's negligible right they have around 20 2288 crores of investments 1100 crores of uh, cash on the balance sheet very strong on the gross block front if you'll see it has gone up from 2889 to 4414 crores so that's the expansion that they have incurred they have around 800 crores of uh, capital work in progress which means that you know the expansion plans is still it's still going on depreciation has doubled so that's that sort of weighs on on the profitability of the company so when we come on the profits if you'll see that the depreciation has gone up by roughly 100 crores or so right so more than 100 crores so this weighs on the profitability of the company because if you'll see the the operating profit has gone up by you know 40 50 percent right but the net profit it, uh, has not gone up significantly so so that is something that is something that we need to take into account that once these capacities are up and running so we will see a sudden spurt in sales and profitability now similar to uh, mgl mahanagar gas limited their sales have remained pretty much flat since the past three four years but we are we have to take uh, covid into account as well and that has disrupted many businesses but this is a uh, this is a daily need uh, business yes they derive certain amount of uh, income from commercial businesses also so we'll have to wait and watch this 2020 and 2021 is an aberration because of covid so we'll have to wait for things to stabilize and see what sort of growth trajectory is coming in good one good thing has happened operating uh, margins have become much better right so mahanagar gas limited has operating margins of around 40 45 percent so if taking that into account if their operating profit margins increase we could see significant amount of uh, you know uh, growth in profitability overall profits have doubled almost doubled since 2016 right uh, as compared to last year profits are pretty much flat so going forward we will need to see some sort of uh, acceleration in growth so sales are flat but due to operational efficiency operational efficiency margins have gone higher and that is the reason why we see that the pat has come higher the profits are higher so if they are able to maintain this uh, if they are able to maintain this operational efficiency these margins then the base in the previous years is pretty low so going forward we can see we can see better numbers so my guess is that we can take a calculated best bet that you know we'll see better numbers chances of the stock going up is pretty high on a five-year basis the median pe is around 31 stock is trading at a pe of around 33 decently valued you know considering the fact uh, that they have a wider network and they have incurred capex also uh, you know we'll we have some sort of uh, uh, you know outlook in terms of if sales can grow profitability can kick in so you know we 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 can say we can take a calculated bet saying that uh you know once the profit start kicking in we can expect the stock to go higher overall if we look at the technical 
from a technical perspective the stock has not done anything since say jan 2020 so it's been almost 18 months stock is pretty much at the same price level reason for that is because if you see you know profits have not gone anywhere and sales have actually dipped so what sort of uh, why are we interested in this if there is sales and profits are not accelerating right so two reasons uh, operational efficiency has become better and once things normalize we can expect sales to go higher even if uh, the, you know so bec- uh, that is happening because if you see the sales sales are stable here and the profits have gone up so once we see higher sales and with o- higher operational margins we can see good numbers coming in from a technical perspective the stock is basically you know been consolidating in this 18% range between 480 and 580 right so what we can do we can look to start accumulating this stock between this range between 520 and 560 this is the range where we can start accumulating the stock hold it for at least two quarters right if we see what's happening here the supply is diminishing stock uh, is going down but you know the volume is relatively low right uh, the the volatility has also decreased as compared to this right so it's, it was pretty volatile here it was in within a 40 45% range that volatility has also decreased so going forward we can see some good traction coming in into this stock so basically looking to accumulate between sort of 520 and 560 sort of levels hold it for two uh quarters and if uh, most probably my bet is that you know exit numbers should come in at a higher clip and we can see uh, this this stock moving up so this is an educational video guys it's not a buy sell recommendation thanks a lot for watching